His praise goes forth. Hosanna, Hosanna. The victory is mine and the battle is the Lord's. Hosanna, Hosanna. No enemy can stand when His praise goes forth. Hosanna, Hosanna. When fear and doubt surround you all about and the enemy's camp is near, say that Jesus in me is greater than He who lives in the world. The victory is mine when the battle is the Lord's. Hosanna, Hosanna. No enemy can stand when His praise goes forth. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. He has won the victory.
Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I wonder what it is that you are laying before the Lord this morning. Perhaps this morning you are laying before the Lord some frustration. Perhaps this morning as we gather together as God's people, you are laying before the Lord some sense of relief. Maybe you are laying before the Lord some anger or some grief. Perhaps you are laying before the Lord the joy that comes from knowing Jesus. Can I suggest that whatever this past week has held, we have the opportunity of bringing it today as an offering before the living God. The good stuff, the not so good stuff, even the boring mundane stuff. All that has been in this week that has just gone, we can bring now before God. And the idea when we bring something before God at the start of a gathering like this, the very real temptation is as the band finish their final piece that we pick it back up again and take it with us into the next week. But actually God says, no more, no more. I have come so that you may have life in all its fullness. And at the commencement of this holy week, this passion week, we are invited to take the journey that Jesus took. And today, as we celebrate his triumphant entry, know that he did that so that we could leave an offering at his feet. And so I wonder if you would do that this morning. Wherever you find yourself now, whatever mask you put on in order to come to the army today, God says to you, come just as you are. Offer where you're at now to him as a living sacrifice and see that he will not continue to do a good work in you. Would you join me as we pray together? Almighty God, what a privilege it is to gather as your people here in this place. And I pray, Lord, that as we gather, that we would have a real sense of your power at work within us. I pray, God, that we would know that you are working within us and around us. God, I pray that you would open our eyes to all that you are wanting to reveal to us. And that as we gather together to lift high the mighty name of Jesus, that we would find you here today. God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for who you are. And we thank you, Father, for the great privilege it is to gather here in your house. Speak to us this morning, we ask in your precious and holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are able, I would invite you to please stand. And we're going to sing together our first song. Hear the shout, the King is coming. See the Christ comes riding by. Lift your palms in joyous welcome. Everyone brought their palms today, I'm assuming. Wave them joyfully on high. And there will be an intro before every verse. So please, if you are able, let's stand and sing these words together.
thank you to the band for your accompaniment there. What a beautiful aid to our worship. I want to share with you a couple of verses of scripture before we hand over to Lauren and the contemporary group. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Hallelujah. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Stay standing because we're going to be singing, if you're able to. We're going to be singing a song called Hosanna. Hosanna. In the New Living Translation, they use the words for this scripture that we're going to hear a bit later on. It says, praise God. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Now we know that praise God in um, Greek is the word Hosanna, which means an exclamation of praise. And it's adapted from a Hebrew word that means save now. Can you imagine standing on the side of the road? On the side of the road, you might want to look at the road here in our tech team. The side of the road for our online congregation so that they can see the road. Jesus is riding through and people are shouting, Hosanna! Yes, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear Hosanna. I want to hear Hosanna from out there. Hosanna! As Jesus rides, can you imagine saying, save now, save me, save me now. The hope and the joy that they would have had in Jesus at that time. And then we know what happens a bit later on in the week, don't we? But shall we sing together today with that same hope and joy of Hosanna in the highest. if you feel comfortable or stand for this next song which does have a bit of a, a quieter tone but it's one of my favourite songs and I really love the narrative or the story throughout it it speaks of the life of Jesus and it reminds us of how the death of Jesus our Lord and our King King of all Kings was part of God's plan to restore the whole world and his relationship with his people with us.
of this plan that you had for us to be reconciled with you. And as we come into this holy week, Father, um, I pray that it would be on our hearts and minds that um, we just really acknowledge what you did. You sent your son for us, for us to be able to have relationship with you, Lord. And I pray this in your name and thank you. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me now? And hopefully everyone online can hear me as well. Welcome to the Perth Fortress this morning. It's great to have you sharing with us. I do have a few people that I wanted to recognize who are watching online. We do acknowledge that this morning there are a few technical glitches. We know that YouTube has bombed a couple of times this morning. So please bear with us. Uh, we know we are live and streaming on Facebook. So if you're on YouTube and you can't see us, switch to Facebook. It'll work a lot better. Uh, we have Patricia watching from Bairnsdale. Helen's in Coffs Harbour. Barbara's down in Mandra, Velma, uh, Maggie in Lockyer Valley. Clyde's out in Putnam Woods in New York. How amazing is that? When we think about how far and wide our message is going, God's message this morning is traveling right around the world. Hayden's in Adelaide, uh, Lynn and Gordon are at home. And I, I wanted to acknowledge Alex. Are you here this morning? Alex, good morning. Last week, Alex was watching from Orlando. And she's here in the room today. We hope you enjoy it so much more in person this morning. It's lovely to have you sharing with us. And for those who are sh uh, also sharing with us for the first time, we hope that you receive a blessing today. We do congratulate Jeff and Lois Sutton, uh, who aren't often able to be with us, uh, but do watch online. It's their 60th wedding anniversary. How amazing is that? Round of applause for Jeff and Lois. And while we're celebrating as well, there is still another week or so that you can give your self-denial uh, gift in your envelope. So if you do still wish to do that, you can do so with the envelope or with your bank transfer. Thank you. Uh, the coffee booth, we are trying to start up coffee booth on Sundays again. So if you would like to be involved, if you would like to do the coffees, if you would like training, if you just want to find out more about it, please see the office during the week and we can help you out with that. Uh, this afternoon, we have Messy Church this afternoon, which is all about chocolate. No, it's not. No, it's not. There will be chocolate, but it is all about Easter. So come along this afternoon at 4.30. It will be a fantastic celebration today in the Centenary Hall, our Easter celebration. And this Thursday, the officers will be having a, an open home for any core members who wish to visit with them. Uh, you're welcome to stay for a full week if you wish. Please just book in in advance. Uh, but if you can let them know just so they can arrange the catering for Thursday especially, that would be great. It is a home open. It is an invite to all of the core if you would like to go along. And more information is in the newsletter there. Thank you. We do have a couple of sad announcements today. It's sad that uh, Don Bowes passed away on Monday. Our prayers are with Dorothy, Jenny, Leanne, and all of the family as they work through this very difficult time. The funeral will be on Easter Saturday at Balga at 10.30 a.m., and bandsmen, bandswomen are asked to bring instruments. Also sad to announce that Arthur Castley's sister passed away. Uh, Hazel passed away this week, and our thoughts are with Arthur and Betty and all the family at this time. Uh, moving on from that, it was a sad moment, but we do ask that to keep everyone updated and to make sure we're communicating well, if you would like to update your details in Breeze, if you don't know how to do that, please see the office or please see the officers and they will arrange for somebody to train you. It's an online thing on your phone. gives you all of the details for the people in the core. Especially over 18s now, you're no longer your parents' responsibility. You get to exist in your own right. That's fantastic. Now we will wait upon you for your tithes and offering. Thank you.
Victories now. We're going to have the opportunity to sing a couple of choruses, and I hope that that's okay. So would you please stand to your feet, and uh, with the wonderful accompaniment of the trio over here, we're going to sing as a testimony, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. He lives, amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus is alive in me. Let's sing together. Here we go. It's no longer I that. about it as well if I'm being completely honest with you the love of Jesus it brings the glory to my soul and this is one of those songs that you can't sit there or stand there kind of going it's the love of Jesus it brings the glory you can see that there's an incongruency there can't you if it's bringing the glory to your soul then there should be some sort of expression of joy on your faces I can't compare it I want to share it I feel I really must declare it the love of Jesus it brings the glory to my soul. Let's sing this twice through together. Thank you. Enough is entitled The Triumphal Entry. It comes from John's Gospel, commencing at verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about and that they and they, they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. 
So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for the message that God has placed on Aaron's heart this morning, we're going to sing the beautiful chorus, At thy feet I bow adoring. Just as those who lined the streets to welcome Jesus bowed down to worship him, so too do we have that same opportunity to do so. However, we have the benefit of knowing the rest of the story. And we can continue to bow, knowing that it wasn't just the saviour of the Jews coming through, but for all mankind. He came and died so that we may have life. So what can we do but bow at his feet and give him all of us to use? Let's sing this chorus a couple of times as we just reflect on these wonderful words.
thank you that we have the honor of knowing you so fully. Knowing what you were before the cross and even more, knowing what you were after the sacrifice. We get to live in the knowledge of you as humanity's saviour and all the grace and freedom that that knowledge brings. Lord, as Aaron brings your word to us today, I pray that you will open our hearts and our minds to all that you want to share with us. Lord, we all need something different, but you know exactly what word we individually need today. Help us to be responsive to your word and to desire to do your will in our lives. Bless Aaron right now as he opens your word. In your wonderful name, amen. At my in-law's house, those words are in the family room, in a beautiful large cross-stitch. At thy feet I bow adoring, bending lower, lower still. And often where I find myself sitting at the table at a family gathering, I'm looking directly at those words. And those words are always an incredible challenge to me, especially the line, bending lower and lower still. I read a little bit of information around the writings of that song and it's particularly um, important and meaningful in the life of Lauren's family given that her great-grandmother was the author of that beautiful chorus. And you think, or well, I think, of the generational impact of God's faithfulness to his people and that the decisions that we make today will impact those in the future. And we have the opportunity to set future generations up for the win, to walk blameless, to walk in the light, and to live by the power of the Holy Spirit as people whose lives are transformed and transforming because of God's great grace. So I ask the question again today, at the start of this holy week, what are you laying at the feet of Jesus? I'm not just talking about what's happened in this past week. But how does your life look at the moment? If we take the words from the book of Romans that talk about offering our lives as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, this being our spiritual act of worship, what does your offering look like today? I want you to keep considering those questions as we explore further this portion of Scripture and as we set the scene for the start of this holy week, this most significant week in the church calendar, but the most significant week in all of history. When I was a cadet, it feels like many moons ago, and with no disrespect to any of the retired officers in the room, I just have to look around and go, maybe in context it wasn't all that long ago. But when I was at training college, we had to do a thing called collecting at the pubs. Any officers or people here had to collect at the pubs or the hotels on a Friday? Well, it was something, even though I'm a raging extrovert, it was something that I did not look forward to doing. In fact, I would try and find any excuse as to how I could get out of it because I just didn't want to do it. We were on a uh, fantastic uh, route of pubs. There was three or four of them. And uh, we had made some good friends along the way. And I mean friends because we would catch up outside of collecting at the hotels. Uh, but I just didn't want to do it. Do you have anything like that where you just don't want to do until you kind of get there and you're in the middle of it? Gosh, I hope Sundays are not like that. Woo! <laughs> and if they are, the mercy seat is free, brothers and sisters. <laughs> 
I'm going to pretend that it's not Sundays, okay? Uh, but I, I did not want to collect at the pubs. Um, I had no problem asking people for money. I had no problem talking with people. I didn't even care that it was a pub, to be completely honest. I wasn't that naive or anything. I just didn't want to do it. Even though my pub collecting buddies were good people and we had a lot of fun, but it was something that I did not enjoy doing until I got there. On one, at one particular pub, there was a fella there who I think now has gone to be with God, and his name was Stork. Obviously, actually, I couldn't even tell you his real name. That's just how he was introduced. He was Stork, and we used to walk past, and we had to wear the caps, of course, you know, it was the full kit and caboodle. And so he would see me walking past the window, or see my cap at least, sort of walking through. And do you know what he would do? He'd get a couple of small glasses <laughs> and would fill them with straight raspberry cordial. Anyone had straight raspberry cordial? I mean, it's not all that bad, to be completely honest with you. And so he'd say, you have a drink, and I'd be like... And what he would do is he'd take my cap and he'd take my collection tub, and he'd go and collect in the pub. And he would always get more money than I would, because no one ever said no to Stork, which is why I drank the cordial. <laughs> not that, I'm not, not that unintelligent. It's pretty good. <laughs> but I did not want to do it, although seeing Stork and building connection with people kind of made it a little bit easier. But it was something that I did not want to do until I got there. And I wonder, have you ever had a change of thought or a change of heart when something like that has happened? Do you have something that you don't really look forward to, to until it's happening or until you get there or until it starts? I wonder how Jesus was feeling, full, fully well knowing the journey that he was taking. And as he entered triumphantly, the people shouted out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Do you ever think about what Jesus might have been thinking during that time? Do you think that perhaps he may have been getting swept up in the excitement of all these people interested in seeing him? Do you think he was getting a bit distracted because he'd caught up with people that he hadn't seen since, you know, a few years beforehand? Do you think he struggled to kind of get his head in the game because he knew what was to come? Jesus came in riding on a donkey to fulfill the prophet of the prophecy that the king would enter on the colt, a young donkey. Now you would expect that if a king were to enter in a triumphant way, that they'd be on a strong horse or there'd be a big military parade, a procession that would celebrate with fanfares and all sorts of glorioso sounds to announce the arrival of the king. And the people who surrounded and who gathered together and we're told that the narrow streets were absolutely chock-a-block. Of course, the people had gathered for the Passover and were there in preparation for that. And they gathered because they heard that Jesus was coming. And they believed that the king was there, the person that would save them. But really, they really were hoping that he would be a political saviour, that he would save them from the oppression of the Romans. I don't think that they were interested in looking for a spiritual saviour. I don't think they were interested in looking for the Son of God, who we believe and know to be truly and properly God and truly and properly man. And as the crowds gathered and shouted in praise, save now, save now, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Have you ever found yourself praying a similar prayer? Maybe not using those words exactly, but finding yourself in the middle of a desperate situation where you are pleading with God to save now. Perhaps someone dear to you had been very unwell. 
Perhaps you were facing a mountain that you thought were impossible to get through. And you pleaded with God, save now. And in an attitude of prayer and praise and celebration, these people called that out to Jesus. Certainly most of them, I assume, meaning save us now from our oppression, be our political saviour. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. My mind has never ever been able to comprehend that the same people who on their triumphal entry were shouting out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, just a few short days later were calling out, crucify him. Do you think Jesus knew that as he entered into Jerusalem? Do you think that changed how he engaged with the people? (laughs) Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There was a hope there for the people. There was a hope there in Jesus. but only in a small portion of what Jesus could offer. And you know, I've been thinking, I think there are lots of people who like to entertain the idea of Jesus even today. Who perhaps I could suggest who enjoy the benefits of Jesus, the peace, the joy, the love, the constant presence, the ability to speak and know who is hearing or who is listening. But I find increasingly more, though people appreciate and want the benefits that Jesus offers, they aren't quite as enthusiastic when it comes to what Jesus is asking of them. They don't become increasingly enthusiastic when Jesus says, actually, I want you to offer your life. I want you to live lives like I created you to live. I want you to follow me. I want you to walk along the path with me. Some of those things that you love that are not good for you, I want you to offer it as a sacrifice. And I wonder if these people were the same. They really liked the idea of Jesus coming or someone coming to save them. But they hadn't considered what that might mean for them. The crowds, as we read in the Scripture, came after Jesus. They followed Him. I kind of imagine the huge hustle and bustle of people wanting to catch a glimpse of this King. And I wonder if there were people who were caught up, kind of just passing by, thinking, what's this crowd all about? What's going on here? Oh, the person next to me just called out Hosanna. I think I might do the same. I wonder what the response or the reaction would have been if they had asked someone in the crowd, what's going on here? Do you think they would have said, the King is here? Our Saviour is here? We're going to be saved from our oppression? I wonder if you've ever been caught up in the crowd... kind of just going along, maybe not even asking some questions, but just kind of going with the flow. 
We read in the scripture that the people who were gathered, the crowds that had gathered, threw down their cloaks and palms. Not necessarily as an offering, but because they wanted the king to have something like a red carpet to kind of walk on. What in our lives are we laying down before him? And at the start of this holy week, this passion week, what are we wanting from God? Can I make an encouragement that this holy week, as we head into all that we will uh, gather to celebrate and reflect on, that we would seek what God is wanting for us during this holy week? What God is wanting to reveal to us this holy week. As I look around and in the mirror as well, I see a room full of people who have heard the Easter story year after year after year. And there's nothing wrong with that. But as we prepare our hearts and our minds today for this holy week, could I be so bold to suggest that we would ask God to reveal something powerful and new to us? so that we can continue to be changed by the power of His Spirit at work within us? Perhaps it'll be through a line of a song. Perhaps it will be as some music is played or a word is spoken. There's certain things, though, that church leaders all across the world notice when it comes to something that comes around so regularly, as in yearly, like the Easter story, is for whatever reason, people kind of start to glaze over. But this is the most significant event in the history of the world. This is kind of the bread and butter of our story. This is the foundation in which we live our lives of faith. That Jesus was who He said He was, the Son of God who died so that we might have life and came back victoriously. And the last line in this portion of Scripture that was read earlier... It says this. This is the Pharisee speaking. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. <laughs> Look how the whole world has gone after him. Could I suggest that complacency and glazing over will get us nowhere? that if we are fair dinkum and serious about sharing the good news of Jesus, that we must be people who live lives that reflect the fact that we serve a risen Saviour who is in the world today. We sing the songs, don't we? I know that He is living, whatever men may say. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. But unfortunately, not all of His people live their lives that reflect that truth. And so it is my prayer that as we seek God during this Easter season, this Holy Week, this Passion Week, that we would ask Him to reveal to us something powerful and something new. 
and that as we are reignited by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we would see the reality of this last line. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Look how the city of Perth has gone after him. Look how Western Australia has gone after him. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And so in order for that to become a reality, we need to seriously consider the posture in which we are approaching this week. Are we positioning ourselves to be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you thinking, gosh, I hope they sing my favourite song this Easter? Are you positioning yourself at the foot of the cross? saying, God, reveal to me whatever you want. If we seriously want the whole world to chase after Jesus, we have a part to play, which is a great privilege, a challenge, and sometimes, if I'm being honest, a little bit of a burden. Because we get a bit comfortable, don't we? We like to be comfortable, though not really comfortable in our uniforms, to be honest. They're the most uncomfortable thing around. But what if this Easter was different? What if God revealed something different to us? What if our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds were open to what He wants to reveal to us this year? In just a few moments, we're going to have a time of reflection and I've chosen the song, The Power of Your Love, because I think that the words contained in these verses are a good, are an excellent posture for us to adopt as we head in to this Easter week, this holy week. Lord, I come to you. That's a good start. That's a great start. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. This isn't us changing our hearts or our minds in our own strength, but acknowledging our need for a saviour And that in order for our hearts to be changed, to become more in tune with Him, only He can do it. And Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away. Hallelujah! By the power of Your love. And the second verse, Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see You face to face. The knowledge of Your love as You live in me. And a line that is so important for the world today. Oh, that the Lord would renew our minds. Our minds are powerful things that can often tell us things that are just simply not true. And we see the effects of these powerful minds on the people all around us. Gosh, we see the effects of our powerful minds in this room. And though our minds are powerful and the messages that they tell us can seem so overwhelming, we serve a powerful God who can renew our minds. Hallelujah. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life, in living every day, every day, by the power of your love. And that chorus that says, hold me close, Let your love surround me. Bring me near. Draw me to your side. And as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle. And I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. So at the start of this holy week, the challenge is there. How will you respond? How will you position yourself 
What is the posture that you will take as we walk into this holy week together? Let's sing these words together. A place of prayer is open. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed. Bring you flowing from the grace. that you would renew our minds, that you would strip away our weaknesses, that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to all that you are wanting to reveal to us. As we walk this path through the Eastern narrative, let us be transformed again by the power of your Spirit at work within us. God, I pray that we would choose you and as we seek you, that we would find you and that you would ignite within us a passion to share the good news of Jesus, that you came and that you lived and that you died and you rose again because you loved us so much. Oh God, that the whole world would chase after you again is our plead and our prayer. And in fact, in response to that, we cry out, Hosanna, save now, Lord, have mercy on your world. 
Father, for my friends that are here in the room and those online, I pray that you would pour out your blessing and your favor and your anointing upon them each. I pray, Lord, that they would know your presence in their everyday life. And Lord, that we would each posture ourselves in a way that helps us to receive all that you are wanting to reveal to us as we step into this holy week. God, we thank you because you love us and because you sacrificed your son so that we might have life and that we might come to know you. Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Saviour, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. As we live in light of the complete Easter story, we know the joy, the peace, and the love that can be found in Jesus. So what better song to sing than sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me peace, give me love. But let's just sing this, this song right now as we um, head out into our week and just declare Hosanna. Hosanna to the King of Kings. I'll invite you to stand back up if you're able and let's sing these three verses. <laughs> posture ourselves in a position where we can see Jesus and all that he wants to reveal to us and that our words and actions encourage others to look for him too. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>